everybody, it's the coach. This is preseason football on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the Denver Broncos and the Chicago Bears. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thanks, Coach. A bit of a sloppy track here at Soldier Field. Still getting some of the wraparound rain bands. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And off we go from Soldier Field. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback who grew up just outside of Cleveland on Lake Erie, Mitchell Trubisky. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And right away, they're going to stack him up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Draw play here. Trubisky gives to Cohen. And from the 25, they work this to the 29. A gain of four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on run downs. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jeff Heath. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Well, certainly not how he wanted to start his night. First throw of the game, an INT. Yeah, it's not easy, but he's got to try and wipe that one away from the memory banks. And let's face it, it's not often a quarterback and a defensive back have a lot in common. But one thing, because they have these individual-type plays, they've got have short memories, don't they? DB gets beat, wipe it away, quarterback throws a pick, has to do the same thing. Hakeem Hicks that time on the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 31, Lock, and this is caught by Watkins. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. First and 10 at the 19. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no game. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Akeem Hicks at 6'5", 332, finds his way home for the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Third and long, it's Locke. Now Locke, he lost the football, it's out. Yeah, On plays like this, where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I feel very confident about this kick, but let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And taking it across midfield and Let's inside go. the 45. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Check, check, 47. Play action, it's Trubisky. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. 
That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. On second down now, it's Cohen. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. Now Trubisky lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. To take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Blitz coming and down he goes. Khalil Mack able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. From the gun on third down, Locke escaping the pressure right. He's going to let this go deep, back over the middle, and unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed. scrimmage and that's it call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down and here comes throw number one for the backup QB and he hits his target Deshaun Hamilton and he's going to be down at the 35 gain of seven the reception good for seven it's third down a second down completion got him seven now here's third and three Agnew now, operating from the go, and able to find Deshaun Hamilton complete. Third and four, he did just enough, and I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving, you don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. You got it. Second and seven. And this is incomplete. Jake Butt, the tight end, his intended receiver. And it's third down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice. Or maybe even routes versus air. Because that's a completion he makes. A fight for the football and it's intercepted. 
kicked off near the 42. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. After the interception, here's Jackson. Got a man open, it's Wims. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A good pick up there, a 22. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Jackson now. That one brought in by his tight end, Adam Shaheen. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now a run with Montgomery. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On second down, Montgomery. And they've got it inside the 10 at the end. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. But they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They have punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. They'll run with Montgomery. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now. We'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. He's going to take off with it. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Third and goal, Jackson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Javon Wims there to make the grab as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And he's got it to make it 7 nothing in favor of the Bears. <laughs> so this drive spans seven plays. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. This is taken at his four. He's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Here's Agnew. Going to throw again. And he whips that one incomplete there. Deshaun Hamilton, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Agnew from the gun, he'll throw. Got him in, it's Brown. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they're going to come to the line here, and it appears trying to go for it on fourth. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. He's oh, got short. Jackpot, his tight Oof. end. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pay. Slam, slam, 
Agnew on first and ten. Flush to his right. Now he'll pull it down. And oh, he coughed it up. And this is picked up by the Bears. And some room to maneuver. And they bring this one back. A fumble return for the Bears touchdown. So the defense forces the fumble to get the score, and a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This one fielded at the five. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He has not had the game that he envisioned. His team has not had the game that they've envisioned here. So how do they turn this around now? But right now what he's looking forward to doing is finding a way to get the added weight on his back. Is it like that monkey that Steve Young was talking about? Remember that in the Super Bowl? Oh, the 95 Super Bowl. Right, when they beat the Chargers, and, you know, he had yep. that weight of expectations and, and pass greats on his back. In this case, it's just bad play. Can he shake it off and then be able to play loose and free and help his team out? Let's see if he can do just that. Back to throw. Oof. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. Jonathan Cyprian there defensively to make the play. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now Agnew to throw. To throw again. Eluding the pressure right. And this will be caught by Brown. Let's go, baby. So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we'll send you down to Orlando. Boy, a rough crowd. No football for six months already. We're skipping halftime. All right, let's get right back to the action. We're set for quarter three. Probably not likely to see many starters in the second half as we get back at it underway in this preseason opener. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they felt they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll drop the throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 34-yard line. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Now a man open down the middle of the field, and he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. This quarterback now hitting on two-thirds of his passes. Ten for 15 so far. First and ten. Oof. Trying for Brown, and 
and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And a good return here as he takes it up past the 30-yard line. Defense. Trying to defend the out route there. Got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. And he got caught in between and created a foul. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Second and six. And Brown's got it for a Denver touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown pass as his guys are back within a single score. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes... You throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit. Soldier Field. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. The Broncos on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and six. Agnew now operating from the gun. And the pressure gets to him again. Bilal Nichols, he's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more... And got his man complete! A gain of 37. Keep playing. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. A running play here on first down is going to go nowhere as he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes, changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys and continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. Well, that's the big drawback to this play. Even if somehow the quarterback pitches it, he's not immune to the big hit. In this case, he kept it and absorbed it anyway. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. 
They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Here's Agnew. From the gun, he'll throw. That's complete to Jake Butt. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off at the 16. First week of the... So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.